welcome to the last video on chapter 7.2. Yes, you heard it. That is it. Two videos. Uh, it's a rather short unit. So um, in this video, we're going to be looking at nuclear reactions. Here are some of the learning objectives, and I'll just quickly read over these with you guys. Uh, first learning objective is to understand that the energy in a nuclear reaction is released as the kinetic energy of the products. So that little word right there, that's kinetic energy. Uh, second learning objective is to sketch and comment on the binding energy curve. So yes, we're going to look at another graph. Uh, third one is to distinguish between fission and fusion reactions and relate them to the binding energy curve. Okay, so these are sort of the, these will probably be covered together quite quickly. And uh, the last one is our calculation of uh, learning objective. Uh, where we need to use the binding energy curve or relevant data to calculate or estimate how much energy is released in a nuclear reaction, including radioactive decay. So let's begin. Uh, the first part of our story is we're trying to look at the um, kinetic energy that is released as a product of our nuclear reaction. So a little bit of background information. Ernest Rutherford, uh, you may have heard of him uh, in chemistry, was... Uh, the discoverer of the proton, or is credited with that. So what he did was he had an experiment where he had uh, a bunch of nitrogen, and what he did was he bombarded it with a bunch of alpha particles. And what resulted from that was uh, the product of two different things. So we have uh, the proton being discovered. So the proton is actually short for proto, meaning the beginning or the first. And uh, it, was sort of, it was sort of the first um, particle that was discovered that, oh, um, it, as it turns out, the hydrogen uh, nucleus, so the nucleus of our typical hydrogen atom, uh, as it turns out, oh, okay, it's actually in other things as well. So that's how we sort of got this... Uh, got the proton. And the resulting, uh, the resulting element that was produced was oxygen. So that's pretty nice to know that we can create oxygen by bombarding nitrogen gas with alpha particles, uh, although it's not our typical oxygen, which would be, uh, I think it's 816, uh, and this one is an isotope of that, so it's a little bit heavier. Okay, um, so what that was really telling us is that this is a process called transmutation. Uh, and so what we're doing is that we're turning or converting nitrogen into oxygen. So they didn't really term it fusion back then. In some ways, it's not our typical fusion. Uh, rather, we're, we're uh, transforming nitrogen into oxygen. Um, and uh, so this is sort of the uh, equation that we're seeing there. and. What, what was discovered from that was kind of interesting, was that the sum of all the particles after the, uh, the transmutation was more than the sum of the mass before. So people are thinking like, well, what was going on there? And so the, uh, the answer to that is uh, E equals to mc squared. So Einstein kind of be like, okay, yeah, uh, can kind of, kind of figure that out, you can say. Um, or people figured that out just shortly after Einstein released his equation. Um, but essentially what's going on is that the conclusion there is that they were able to make before Einstein's equation was that the kinetic energy of the alpha particles was converted into mass. How much? We didn't really know until Einstein came up with that. But um, they had this idea that energy was converted to mass, but they didn't know how much exactly. Okay. Um, so there's actually two ways to find the release of energy or the change of energy as a resultant of the change in mass, okay? So mass energy, um, we sort of talk about that quite naturally as if they were equivalent to each other, and in many ways they are. Um, so when we talk about the change of mass, we can quickly uh, convert that to the change of energy using Einstein's equation there, e equals mc squared. Okay, uh, in a nuclear reaction, the mass of products is less than the mass of reactants. So this is different from what we just saw above, right? 
where the um, the product had uh, more mass than the reactants. Here we're saying um, the products have less than the reactants. So this is for nuclear reaction as opposed to transmutation, which is what we were talking about earlier. Okay, so this was sort of where things started, and then, but um, that's just background information. So uh, focus more on this particular definition right here. Okay, so hopefully that didn't really confuse you guys too much. Okay, so um, if we look at an example, there are um, we'll look at an example a little bit later, but there are two ways that we can figure this out. Uh, one is to figure out the mass. Um, differences of the reactants and the products, and then uh, plugging that back into e equals, e equals mc squared, we can find the change of energy. The second method is to look at the binding energy. So here you're gonna notice that the change of mass is reactants subtracting from uh, products. And here we have the binding energy of products subtracting the reactants. So energy and mass um, they're sort of uh, reversed when we do our subtraction of each other. Uh, best way is just to memorize one and then remember the fact that they are opposites of each other. So uh, that kind of helps you uh, figure things out a little bit easier. You can obviously, uh, as you work with it more, you will naturally remember both of them. Um, so we'll get into uh, some of these calculations very soon, which was uh, learning objective number four, okay? So the whole idea of kinetic energy release, that was coming from the story of uh, Rutherford. And now we're gonna look at objectives two and three, and then we'll get to four very shortly after that. Okay, so here we have the, uh, the curve or the graph that we, um, you're expected to know or, or learn about. Um, if you Google this type of graph, the, the relationship between um, the mass or the, the, the number of nucleons in a nucleus, versus the, um, the binding energy, uh, you're gonna see this curve quite a bit, okay? And so uh, Cognity has done a really, really good job at highlighting that. Everything in red here, all that stuff in red, this is to do with fission, and everything in blue is to do with fusion, okay? So we fuse together generally speaking, lighter or smaller nuclei into a more heavier nucleus. And with fission, we're splitting uh, heavier nucleus into two lighter ones. So it, it wouldn't make sense to, to fuse together two heavy elements into even more heavy elements. Um, it, it just doesn't really work that way, okay? Uh, you can also think back about our stability curve is that um, um, elements actually become very unstable as they get further and further up. So the natural thing to do is that we know that they actually do want to decay back into something more stable. So that again sort of uh, brings together the whole story that we split heavier things and we fuse together lighter things, such as what's happening in the sun where it's uh, combining hydrogen into helium to release its energy. We'll get more into that a little bit later. Uh, so that was our learning objective numbers two and three. Now, um, I highlighted iron here. <clears throat> Sorry, just going back a little bit. Um, Cognity highlights nickel there. Iron is also pretty close in that sort of plateau where it could be one or the other. <clears throat> so uh, just for your awareness, if you do a search, you might see iron, you might not see nickel. Um, in uh, in our Google uh, searches. <clears throat> okay, let's get into some calculations. So nuclear fusion is well as the first thing we'll look at. And um, again, it's when two lighter nuclei or particles are combined to form a heavier nucleus. <clears throat> so we have um, a, an isotope of hydrogen being um, fused together with another isotope of helium. So we have a heavier hydrogen and we have a lighter helium being fused together to a regular uh, helium. And then we also have a proton being released there. So um, oftentimes in many of these examples that you're going to see is that we've got a little table here where we've got a lot of the information calculated. But um, some of this information you can, excuse me, yourself. 
Uh, and this was actually from similar calculations from 7.2.1, provided that you have access to the atomic mass. So um, I'll just go through one of the calculations here on the side here. So here we have the nuclear, uh, the nuclear mass of the isotope of hydrogen. And um, this is a little bit, um, I'll just say it's a little bit different. Um, it's a little bit heavier than our regular hydrogen because it's got one more uh, neutron, but it's, it's smaller than the sum of the two together, as it turns out. So um, what we're going to do is these values right here, this was from um, 7.2.1. Uh, you can go back and check out that table. These are pulled directly from there. These are also in your data booklet. So the uh, atomic mass unit for protons and neutrons. We do the subtraction here. So this value was just a straight lookup from this table right there. And again, this was taken from the data booklet. And um, so we get this final value here. And you might remember that um, this is in the atomic mass unit. And so what we're trying to do is we want to convert that uh, into uh, electron or mega electron volts. So when we do the multiplication, we end up with this value. Because there are two nucleons, we need to divide that by two. Okay? So this is a quick little review of the calculations that we've done quite a bit of practice of last lesson. Okay? So we end up with that value, which is, for the most part, um, pretty close to that in terms of um, the last two significant figures being a little bit different. Okay? So maybe they had used a slightly more accurate or different value to make that calculation. Um, okay, so uh, what we've got here is using method number one, we're going to subtract the mass of the reactants and the from the mass of the, uh, the mass of the product from the mass of the reactants. And um, so again, I've just kind of written out the chemical formula here, which was uh, up here. And so I've just kind of transposed that down here. Um, this little part at the beginning, so there is our hydrogen right here. Okay, and we've got our helium uh, isotope over there. And then here we have helium and then the uh, proton. So the difference in mass is that many atomic units, atomic mass units. And so we need to substitute that into our E equals to MC squared. And again, this should seem quite familiar. Uh, substitute the change of mass, which is right there. Okay, and then we replace u with this other new constant, so we don't need to deal with our speed of light. And we don't have to deal with that changing of kilograms to atomic mass unit. Uh, so again, we're, we're simplifying things a little bit. And so we're going to end up straight up with 18.4 mega electron volts. And method number two, which as you can see here, this might look a little bit shorter. So um, again, you can choose whichever one, as, as long as you can solve it one way, uh, that should be good enough. But um, having the other method would be a good, um, a good way to double check your work. Okay, so um, here we have the binding energy of our product. So our binding energy was calculated down here. So it might take a little bit more work. So if you remember, we were doing this extra calculation over here. So it does take, it looks like it's less work on paper, but there is this extra calculation for each of the items involved. Okay, so actually, if you're, if you're not given the table, this would actually be more work if you had to start from the beginning. Uh, but anyways, it's, it, it's just a little bit more work, okay? Uh, but anyways, we got the table, so we're using all of that information. A lot of this was taken directly from there, so the energy of the product and the uh, the reactants. And again, we f end up with a similar value uh, as what we had before. So uh, as I mentioned, a good way to double check it. Okay, here we have another example. So we're asked to calculate the energy released from another nuclear fusion reaction. Uh, and we're given, given that uh, hydrogen, this hydrogen isotope 3,1, has this atomic mass unit and has this binding energy. So we've got the binding energy. I'm going to choose the easier way uh, down here. And so 
find the energy of product, uh, subtracting from our two um, reactants. Okay, so we're given this one right here. This was uh, a straight lookup from earlier, so we already had hydrogen two one from earlier. Okay, and again we also have helium also from earlier as well. Okay, so that was a lookup from the table from before right here. Okay. And so once we do our computations, we get 17.1 mega electron volts. Okay, um, nuclear fission. When a heavy nucleus is split into two lighter nuclei, so we've uh, briefly mentioned that already, but um, this is probably one of the um, sort of, this is the sort of nu nuclear reaction or fission that um, a lot of governments are worried about, okay, is the splitting of uranium, okay, which all it needs is a neutron to combine itself with a uranium. And once that happens, the uranium becomes highly unstable. And because it's highly unstable, it's going to want to split itself. And then so it starts creating a, um, um, a fission reaction. So we get uh, krypton and uh, barium. And you might notice that not only do we get krypton and barium, we get even more neutrons. And guess what? If this is one single uranium atom and we have a chunk of uranium atom, these neutrons, oh, uh, there's other uranium atoms around. So it very quickly chain reacts that process. And um, so very quickly, um, what uh, to control the nuclear reaction uh, in, let's say, a nuclear power plant, uh, what they actually try to do is they try to limit or take away these neutrons so that the, uh, the chain reaction is contained. Because right now we're looking at essentially an exponential um, reaction here. Oh, sorry, that's uh, 3 to the power of n. Okay, so um, yeah, that's going to multiply very quickly. Okay, um, that, that was a little bit off topic, but uh, well, s somewhat off topic. Okay, find the energy released in the fission reaction above. So uh, essentially the combination of uranium and then the splitting into krypton and barium. Okay, um, so we've, we've been giving in the table here, we've got uranium, we've got barium, whoops, we've got uranium, barium, and krypton. We're gonna switch colors. <clears throat> So mass of reactants is we've got our uranium and we have our neutron. So this is the neutron, this is our uranium. And we have our, this is barium, Ba. And then we have our krypton right here. And then we have three neutrons. Okay, and so when you do all the math, we end up with, um, that many atomic mass units. And so you can plug that in one more time uh, into e equals mc squared. Uh, I'm not gonna go through the details of the substitutions, right, speed of light cancels. So we get 173.3 mega electron volts. Okay, uh, last little example here in terms of calculations. So hopefully this is, um, if you need to slow down the video, do uh, pause it and try to go through the calculations yourself. Um, or what you can even do is you can try to use the um, use the other methods because we also have the um, the binding energy here. So I'd really encourage you guys to uh, pause this video, try to use this, try to complete this using method two, and see if you get the same results as uh, this particular value here. Okay, um, so here uh, again, I'm, I'm trying to alternate back and forth between um, the different uh, methods, um, just so you guys get more exposure. So here we have another reaction, neutron going into uranium. This time it's splitting up into, um, is that xenon or xeon? And then SR. 
And so um, we have XE over here. We have SR over there, two different elements. And then we have uranium. Okay, and so this, again, because uh, the work has been done for us already, um, we can, th this makes our life a little bit more simple, okay, using method two. But again, I would urge you guys to um, pause the video and then try to do it yourself using method number one, okay? You should get the same results. So just check back a little bit early in the video. This was how we did it method one. This is how we're doing it in method number two right now. Okay, um, last little bit is that I want to mention is there is a really good video here um, at the end of Cognity um, on seven in chapter 7.2.2, .2, right at the very bottom. And um, it's a, a really it's a it's a long video. It's about 14 minutes um, about the topic of fusion, and it sort of explains. It compares the difference between fusion versus fission. And what it actually, when you actually work out the math, we actually get more energy in a fusion reaction than we get in a fission reaction. But currently, all of our so-called nuclear technology is based off of fission. So if we can generate more energy in a different nuclear reaction, why aren't we doing it? Um, the, the, the difficulties of that is explained in the video. Um, fusion is also what our sun uses and what stars use uh, to generate their energy. And so what the sun has uh, in terms of its advantage is that it has massive, uh, has massive gravitational field. And because fusion is releasing all that energy, it's giving off all that energy. Um, but what gravity is doing is that it's saying, "Hey, wait a minute! Nope, I don't want you. I don't want these protons to escape because there is an electromagnetic force because they're light charges, electrostatic charge. So they're actually trying to repel each other. And so you've got all these protons inside the sun, and they're like, "Hey, I don't want to be beside you." Uh, but the sun's like, no, I got too much gravity. And so it creates sort of a, a perfect equilibrium. And so that perfect equilibrium allows the sun to sustain a fusion reaction. And um, the video sort of explains what scientists have been trying to do uh, in order to create a fusion reaction happening. Uh, so I'd encourage you guys to watch that video, okay? So that's a short little summary of the video. Um, see you guys uh, in chapter 7.3.